so I'd like to call to order uh, this meeting of the Waterbury Select Board on Monday, the 1st of May, 2023. Uh, the first agenda item is to approve the agenda. And um, I just found out that uh, the library representative will not be able to address us tonight due to a uh, emergency and uh, so that puts another 15 minutes on the agenda and I'm wondering if we might just uh, revisit the parking lot to see if we, what we might want to pull up I'm giving it a quick look through um, I thought perhaps an update on reappraisal if we have any uh, update on what's happening in the Vermont legislature um, I can provide a quick update on uh, my conversation with uh, Martha Statkus uh, on planning and zoning, and uh, then also I don't know if we have any update on the uh, parade policy, but we could decide how we want to proceed on that. Um, the gravel supply. Tom and I went to visit uh, Chris at the uh, um, the um, quarry uh, on the uh, um, what is it? Sorry, Sweet Road. Uh, on Sweet Road. And so, uh, Chris, I don't know if you'd be prepared to tell us what you what we talked about. Yeah. Uh, so, Tom. Well, but we'll, we'll, we have to put that on the agenda. We'll put it up uh, fairly quickly. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to try to get an update on all of these, yeah, and uh, then we can decide how we're going to address them, all right? I, I need to add something to consent to when you have a second. Okay. Uh, and then uh, I don't know if we have an update on the inclusivity uh, policy training. Just just getting dates worked out. Okay. We won't, we won't include that one. All right. Um, can I propose then with Karen's amendment, what do you want to add, Karen? Um, I got a uh, first class liquor license uh, request from Creek Brewery today. So I just wanted to add that to the consent items. So I was going to prove that we, in addition to that agenda, the consent, those four items, um, could we do them after the um, zoning bylaw? Just given that I believe our uh, candidate for conservation commission is here, so in the interim okay. time. Sure. Do that one first up. And if it's um, okay, I could add one more item. Okay. Um, I just could give a quick briefing on a fire truck. Ooh, fire truck. Fire truck. Nice. <laughs> I really got everyone fired up. Can I get a ride? <laughs> okay. So, so we're adding after the appointment, uh, uh, consider appointment of Marty uh, Johansson, um, gravel supply. Parade policy, fire truck, <laughs> reappraisal, <coughs> and planning and zoning. Yeah. Okay, planning and zoning. All right. And we've got the uh, amendment to the uh, consent agenda. I hope so. Mm -hmm. First class license for free folk brewery under B. For free folk. Motion to approve the agenda as amended. Second. Okay. All right. We have motion moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, we have an agenda. Next uh, on the agenda is the consent agenda items. Do I have a motion? A motion to approve all the items on the consent agenda. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, consent agenda is approved with the amendment. All right, now public session. 
Um, I'd like to, this is part of the agenda where uh, anything that's not on the warrant agenda can be brought forward by any member of the public. And we ask that you keep your comments to three minutes or less. Um, I'd like to just start by saying that uh, at our last meeting, uh, a couple of people uh, took exception to some of the comments made by the select board, uh, myself included. Uh, and uh, I'd just like to uh, offer an apology. I offer an apology to them. And I'd like to offer a public apology uh, if anyone feels as though we're impugning the integrity of anyone that's uh, serving the town, because that's not our intent. Uh, and it's uh, certainly important that uh, we uh, do what we can to preserve the trust uh, that we uh, put in people who uh, serve uh, in appointed positions. And um, I think uh, you know all of us can do better. I certainly. Uh, will uh, make all efforts to improve my performance uh, as chair and uh, appreciate it. Uh, all of us can, can do that and just remember that everyone is serving as a volunteer uh, and that's very important to the function of the town. Yes, Mark. In addition to that, I had a about 45 minute telephone conversation with the person uh, involved. It was a very frank conversation. I think it was very productive. Mm -hmm. And I think we came out uh, with some good outcomes. And um, I think it's a good place to move forward. Great. Yeah. So, and, uh, thank you for taking the time to doing that. And I think that that's probably the preferred way of dealing with things. Uh, you know, public praise, private uh, concerns. And uh, let's, let's move the, the issues of the town forward. All right, uh, any other comments in the public session? Anyone else want to come forward? Anyone on Zoom? Yes, sir. I have a question. Yeah. Would you, you want to come forward? Huh? Would you like to come forward? Sure. Uh, this is in regards to the gravel grinder. Yeah. And I think, uh, I'm sorry to do this, but uh, do you mind just saying your name for the record? Sure. Marty Johansson. Uh huh. Um, <clears throat> I had a question in regards to the gravel grinder. Sure. And uh, the bathhouses, where the, not the bathhouse, but the toilets are going to be open. Mm -hmm. And at the Rusty Park, there's only going to be two toilets. And I was just curious if they're going to have extra toilet facilities available. There's going to be about 400 people there. Yeah, I think their paperwork does say they have porta potties. Porta -potties. Well. They've always brought porta potties in the past. I would assume it's just going to Yeah, yeah that's uh, two, two toilets. It's not going to be enough for the, the crowd that they bring. There's a question brought up in a rotary about that. So mm -hmm. That's why I was asking. Yeah. Pretty standard thing, Marty. You like to see for any big events that they I know. have some sort of consideration for, you know, public restrooms. Yeah. And they've been running this for a number of years, so I'm assuming that they've got that under control. If not, they'll hear about it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else from the public? All right. Let's move on to uh, the library strategy. Strategic planning uh, will be moved off. Uh, we don't know. Hopefully the 15th. Hopefully the 15th. All right. And then uh, appointment of Marty Johansson to the Conservation Commission. Do I have a motion? Uh, sure, Marty, uh, maybe you could just come up and tell us uh, why you're why, yes. no, no, You don't have to introduce yourself a second time, but do have a seat. Okay, what do you want, what do you want to know? Uh, could you tell us uh, why you've thrown your hat into the ring uh, to join the conservation? Sure. Uh, I've been involved with conservation work since the sixth grade, not in grade school, actually. Uh, I have a, a degree in bi biology from the University of Minnesota and then a master's degree in environmental health in Minnesota also. Uh, as far as interest in conservation work, um, threw up on a partial time on a family farm. I started a tree farm there. I worked for the state of Minnesota Fisheries Department doing research and conservation work on uh, <clears throat> lake trout, or not lake trout, but uh, rainbow trout lakes that we 
we worked on. Um, I do have quite a bit of background in forestry and, and in biology. I'm one of those interests that I've always had. Okay. Great. And what's the, the tenure for this uh, slot? Mm. Remember? I think it's four years. Four years. You're prepared to serve four years. <laughs> <laughs> I live that long. <laughs> but I just want to add, I know Marty fairly well. I uh, just want to add, he's a very active <coughs> member of the Waterbury Rotary. And uh, he definitely has Waterbury interests at hand. And I would second that he would be an excellent addition to the Conservation Commission, especially since I'm the liaison to that group. Yes, well, it's good the connection's already made. Yeah. All right. Any further questions for Marty? No. Do I have a motion? I have a motion to approve uh, Marty Johansson for a four-year term to the Conservation Commission. Second. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor of uh, appointing Marty Johansson to the Conservation Commission, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Congratulations, Marty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Your service. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks service. for coming forward. Okay. We'll move on to some of the uh, newly added uh, items on the agenda uh, the uh, gravel supply. Um, just as a bit of uh, uh, introduction. Uh, Chris uh, Yens invited Tom and I to come up and uh, take a look, and also uh, uh, Bill Woodruff uh, take a look uh, at the uh, uh, gravel and sand supply uh, at the uh, Sweet Road uh, gravel pit. And uh, existing one. Yes, an existing one, not uh, the one farther down uh, that we also took a look at uh, previously. <coughs> and discussed uh, whether there might be uh, sufficient material there to serve the town's purposes for a certain amount of time. And uh, so, uh, Chris, uh, would you mind coming forward? Sure. <clears throat> so the gravel pit on Sweet Road is property owned by the Callens. Um, it's been, an operation, existing operation for a couple of decades anyway. The town did operate out of it at one point. Uh, first, it was run privately by Doc Callen, and then, uh, then the town got involved in it for a short period of time. Um, there was a rift, and the town ended up uh, not, not being allowed to use the pit anymore. Um, and at one point, somebody had come to me and said, expressed the uh, desire to get out of that pit. And lo and behold, I said to myself, I said to myself the state would allow me to operate out of there. So I went to see Ed Stanick at Act 250, uh, <clears throat> and he was all in. Um, so I've been running it for close to 20 years, probably. Um, it's been a great asset for me, uh, for the locals, because I've been, been able to keep the cost down on aggregate sources for projects in our Waterbury area. Mm -hmm. In lieu of what's happened with the Bolton Pit or what's happening with the Bolton Pit, um, the permit at the Callum Pit is currently being updated um, with me as co-applicant and uh, one of the thoughts that I had was that maybe I can help subsidize a loss from the local pit. Um, Just for those that aren't up on that, uh, Tom had gone to uh, uh, the owner of the Bolton Pit to ask to see if uh, we could uh, get an expanding supply of sand and aggregate, and um, she's not interested. Yeah. So the E-towns that did operate out of the Bolton Pit 
turn. Now I'm going to be forced to go elsewhere. Um, the McCullough boys, I've had Ian McCullough and uh, uh, heck's his name, and one of the other guys there that's associated with the business up at the pit here recently um, to look at the source that I had and uh, <clears throat> talk about whether or not it's worth me crushing gravel, uh, not only for myself, but possibly the town as well. Um, I've been recently extracting material and putting it into a huge stockpile um, specifically for the purposes of crushing. Uh, there is a sand source there as well that I'm also trying to stockpile. And uh, if I can manage to get it screened and meet the same specs, in fact, there was a pile up there that I almost took some out of it uh, to put in a plastic bag and I got some some of Aaron's um, road sand at my house. I was going to put the two in sandwich bags. I'd be hard pressed. You, you could tell them apart, but that's I still got to research that process. But anyway, I'm still working on uh, compiling enough gravel to crush not only for my needs, but possibly the town's needs. Um, I'm actually just spoke today about. Um, taking a few loads rather than having McCullough move in with their crusher and pay them X amount of dollars to crush this entire pile and end up with a pile of junk. I was thinking about transporting a few loads to wherever their crusher currently is and running through the crusher. To mm -hmm. See if that's going to generate the quality yeah. you want? Yeah. Don't the McCulloughs operate out of Barry? Well, they're out of Middlesex, but they, they currently uh, bought the pit at uh, just off exit six. Actually, they bought that two or three years ago, the old, what they call the Brusso pit. That's a quarry, it's a stone quarry yeah. that provides the stay mat, the black stay mat that you see in everybody's driveway. But they also just purchased uh, with used quarry, which is a similar quarry, similar product on um, the uh, ramp uh, just below the uh, hospital. In Montpelier, but they just acquired that quarry as well. But their gravel source in South Barry is uh, depleting. They're, I think I told you last time that they're crushing granite and mix with that gravel to try to you know, stretch that source. Um, I don't know what type of material it is. I haven't seen it yet. One thing I was curious about, if we can figure out, because uh, Woody hasn't come to the table with any information, is you know what. What is Woody? What is Celia and Tom? What are you guys, you know, investigating as other sources? I'd like to know what those are and the cost you know, associated with that, and uh, you know how you're planning on trucking. I, I'm hearing things out in the construction world about other towns that are hiring uh, other trucking companies to try to put up a supply. Um, yeah, there's lots of shuffling going on now. Baron Pitt is is closing, but so I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I've told you now, and um, until I get a little bit further into this, I, I don't have a lot of better information to give you until I figure out what type of quality. I think it's gonna be a great quality gravel. Um, actually, I have a, uh, just a video today that uh, I was up there yesterday bailing material. Um, and you could pass this around real quick if you wanted to. Um, because um, uh, the sound is, has a lot to do with you can hear the amount of stone that's in the in the gravel um, it's, uh, is that the same uh, material that you were excavating when we were up there you can hear when they drop the bucket, you can see it. Yeah, the mountain rock. Who rocks up this way? It's, it's, uh, it's uh, it beats a whole pit at 10 times over as far as the quality. So I'm thinking it's going to be a. Uh, uh, really, yeah, let's just say he's not going to be much Sorry. Are there some other sources that we're currently? Investigating anything that seems promising. There's nothing local. You've got um, so I'm actually 
just spent a lot of today writing a letter to Julie Moore, who's the head of ANR, about the potential site. But there was a survey done in 1974, I believe, of all the potential gravel sites <laughs> in town. And a number of good sites were found. They've all got roads or houses on them. Yeah. Um, so there's. Yeah, I guess I'm going to throw this out there. I think it's prudent that you could somebody from the municipality maybe speak to somebody at some state level to try to alert somebody that the resource, the aggregate resource issue is going to be a huge issue in years to come. Because right now, I don't, I don't see where it's on the radar by any state officials at all. Yeah. And what's going to happen is you're going to come up against the wall and there's not going to be any resources. And then the doctor yeah. should, should know oh, this because he was, was in the construction industry for years. Yeah. yeah. You, so would think so you would think that he would, it's just a matter of, it, I don't think it's just rising to a level that of, of necessary, you know, it's until it's a crisis, that's what they're going to have is crisis. Kind of thing. I've always said we're, we're reactive, not proactive. Yeah. Well, the other yeah. piece that I'm, you know, writing to in the letter is, and Woody's got some of the numbers, but I don't know offhand how many yards of the different types of solar gravel we buy, but sand, it's about 3,000 yards. But what does our tandem truck take? A load is it 13 yards? 16 yards. 16 yards. So uh, think about think about the number of trips. Yeah. Think about the number of gallons of diesel and the tons of CO2 <clears throat> put into the air, and then double or triple it. And that's so. Also, to have a site at high elevation central to our dirt road network and eliminate all that CO2 is yeah. it's a big win for everyone, I think. So, two more things and then I'll shut my mouth. Um, <coughs> so, the Baron Pit's only going to open from noon or 12 30 on to four. So, that's going to make it much more <coughs> costly for a truck to go down there to only haul half a day. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not like hauling, you know, Stevie Wilder typically hauls for the town of Waterbury on a, on a kind of a spur of the moment basis when he has nothing else to do with the good fill in for him. It's cost effective for the town, but when he does it, he commits himself for a day, you know, if he doesn't have any other trucking. And he can typically, he tries to produce about 11 loads a day. Uh, that's what makes it cost effective, not only for him, uh, but for the town. So by cutting those hours in half, now he's going to be hauling a lot less uh, in half the time. He's going to lose the efficiency. Lose. Not only yeah. the trucker's going to lose, but the town's going to lose because he's not going to be as efficient. Uh, you said something earlier about Stop old. <laughs> maybe I'm losing something, and maybe some of less more people have this question. If you have a certain amount of material that you have to do, and you could do it in a in a half day versus a full day, I guess I'm not understanding where the cost difference is. It's just not available. So, so I understand it's not available. <laughs> I, I don't think it's your question. It sounded like you know, so, like like Steve Wilder was going to make half the amount of trips. Yeah. So if he people. makes if he makes eleven trips in a full day, that's because he's there at six thirty in the morning. Right. And you know, well before they're open, so he's the first, and, and it's on a first come first served basis. But if he has to go in at twelve thirty, he may only get three or four loads by the end of the day versus eleven. So it, ideally, he he could get five and a half loads. In that, but he's, there's no way. There's no way in the remaining from 1230 to the time okay. she closes, there's no way that he's going to produce five and a half loads. He might produce three, he might produce four. Uh, where if he's there for the whole day, he's had he's got it on him so that he can put out 11 loads a day. You understand what I'm saying? It's it's just yeah, uh, it's the next bill use of his day. Yeah, it's more efficient. Yeah. More efficient. yeah. If, yeah. you can, if you can utilize the whole day because he doesn't stop for lunch, he doesn't, you know, it's just straight boom, 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 boom. Um, the other thing I was going to say too yeah. that uh, to haul to haul material in those loom trucks that we have, we have one hand. All the rest are six, seven yard mm -hmm. trucks. 
Those seven yard trucks burn as much fuel per trip as that big truck does. Uh, and you're only hauling less than half of what the big truck hauls. So it's not efficient or cost effective to use those little trucks in any way, shape, or form to haul the material. Uh, so I just want you to be aware of that so that if you happen to see that it's being done, you can question it. And... All right. Well, thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. Um, and, you know, just for the record, uh, Julie Moore is the head of ANR, uh, chief policy uh, person for the state. Uh, so I think we're, we're going to the top. I think that's Tom's uh, intention is to uh, address this as a pol state policy issue. And hopefully we can uh, be influential. Right, yes, one sir. more thing. If, if, if it's possible to set up an uh, in-person meeting, and if, if, if I get help by being there to mm -hmm. help explain this whole thing, I'm yeah. happy to do it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Great. Chris, thank you for stepping forward on this, sure. and uh, we will try to get you some information about what our needs are, what we're looking for, and uh, hopefully we can come to terms and uh, make good use of your offer. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, next uh, item is, uh, are we on the fire truck yet? Parade. 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 Parade first, then fire truck. Sorry. Parade. Um, this is something that, that came to our attention uh, when Scott Culver uh, came forward and prepared a very uh, detailed report for the parade that uh, we approved for the Little League. Uh, the stick figures. Mm -hmm. on the, on the yeah, that was yeah. stick figures. <laughs> um, and the, uh, but he did, you know, uh, we talked about needing to address uh, the uh, all the access and ingress uh, along the parade routes and, and he did just that uh, and um, so that sort of brought forward what is our parade policy on parades that uh, require road closures and those that don't because it's, it's pretty different um, and uh, so I started to do a little bit of research I found uh, that uh, Montpelier does have a parade policy and an application on this which I forwarded to Tom uh, Tom I don't know if you Done any further work on this, but maybe we can like set a horizon on when we can. Yeah, I think Scott wrote the map for us. Mm -hmm. uh, That's a good road map, if you will. So if you can oh, just uh, turn that into a policy. Okay. I think we're really close. And from what I understand, it went up without a hitch. Great. Yeah, so I understand. Do you need help with any of that? I don't think so. I think we're we're really close, and I think. <laughs> Gary asked all the relevant questions. Mm -hmm. And can it turn into not just a policy, but an, an application so that it's really clear what people need to fill out and do um, as we hopefully move forward with applications for lots of other things that are sort of amalgamous at the moment? Absolutely. Cool. Thank you. All right. Um, should we give you uh, until the first uh, meeting in June? To address that, yes. Please. I had a similar question in the um, same vein as Danny, which is that I think it's spot on on parades. I'm very excited about it. I don't know about other just large events in general. In my mind, some of the nexus was not only the parades and this question of road closure, but again, the road races, which don't always require things, things like mm -hmm. gravel grinder, which has that like component. Marcus, yes. And we just asked about what a party. So I guess my one question would be, I understand if we want a specific policy for the parades themselves, but I also wonder about just large events in Waterbury and mm -hmm. to work at RW for Arts Fest. You know, again, I don't know. And to the extent we need to reference other state statutes, I believe VTrans has a threshold for if you're above X amount of people. And we're um, say. actually spent some time on this last week. We have an ordinance. What's the, what's the entertainment the permit? Entertainment. That's what we for circus smart. So, so I guess right. that's my that and one question I had last week was about the disc golf tournament. And so I read the ordinance closely and we had a rent policy about events and field use. And I determined they didn't need a permit, they didn't need necessary select board approval. Um, but at the same time, yeah, it's an event with a few hundred people. Well, there's the uh, vendor permit too, which is different than the- Which was different. So there is a vendor permit, but that's different from the event itself. That's just a vendor selling at the event. So 
it, it almost suggests to me more broadly that we should look at that ordinance and, and maybe update it, maybe not, but take a close look at it. The entertainment ordinance? Yeah. Well, and the vendor one. Right? And the vendor one. And I'm yeah. seeing that, like, you had the, the bonus that I'm sure Karen told them they had to be on for, like, the liquor, you know, kind of that checkbox of, like, are you having an event? Does it have liquor? Here's the things you need to do for that. Does it have a road closure? Here's the things yeah. you need to do for that, just to try and get folks a one-stop shop. You know, Does yeah. anyone on the board want to sort of take the lead on that, um, <clears throat> taking a look at those ordinances and working with uh, Tom and Karen on it? I have some, yeah, I have some capacity and interest for that. I can put that on the list. Oh, just a, maybe it's a dumb question. I always say there's no dumb questions. How would a parade not have road closures? Uh, well, uh, I can bring up, uh, for instance, the uh, the anti car show yeah. uh, has a parade. Uh, during on the Saturday afternoon, right. but we don't close the roads. They just run down they the main drive, street, right. uh, turn around by uh, the uh, train station, and come back. It's a very unique exception. Yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously, uh, I would you say you can't have uh, any other parade would really uh, be pedestrians walking in the street. Right. The road. But uh, yeah, okay. that's that's one. Right. And actually, uh, Winterfest ran a similar parade uh, a couple of years ago, um, just running cars down the street in the middle of winter. Nobody was on the road anyway, so it didn't make any difference, but uh, there was no road for winter. Thank you. All right. Um, so uh, the resolution is that Danny is going to look into this uh, and get back to us with a report. Do you want to tell us when you might? Uh, yes. Can it be that? Let's. Can we make it June? Yeah. First meeting in June. That's great. Let's go. All right. Now we're on the fire truck. Ooh, fire truck. So Gary came into my office late last week. Um, our fire capital plan actually called for two new tanker trucks two years ago because um, they were 20 years old at that point. I know they all look brand new because they're kept in great shape. Um, but we've got two vehicles that are each 22 years old. Um, there's typically an 18 to 24 month lead time on the vehicles. Um, Gary talked with the Sourcy, which is a Vermont vendor, and they've got a vehicle available in 12 months, but got to get the go button now. And I said to Gary, um, and we wouldn't pay this until 2024, and that um, I want to bring it to the select board for pre-approval and bring them a financing plan. I don't have a financing plan yet, but what I said to Gary was, give me a purchase order that has a non-appropriations clause that says if not approved by the select board of the voters, we're off the hook. And, and pretty much all those contracts have that and start the process um, so we can get a vehicle a little quicker. Um, so we can have a full proposal for you in two weeks with some real numbers, how I would propose to finance it, or at least a couple of options to consider for the budget, but it's obviously an increase in the budget for next year. All right, which we can, it's up to the voters to approve, right? Um, okay. Was this brought before the board two years ago? I don't know. Um, uh, just one second. Chris. When you say that, I'm thinking to myself, we just bought two trucks. I would say yes. Right. I mean, yeah. We bought two trucks simultaneously along with the roadside mower tractor. And um, <coughs> that was one of the things. I think, well, I want to say a dump truck. I'm not even a pickup, but I know there was two trucks that were just purchased. Yeah. yeah, so I'll have, full, I'll have the full history and the full proposal for you in two weeks. Yeah, so my but this, yeah. I would like to know. November 2019 special meeting, which I recall attending to authorize borrowing a million dollars by note um, to replace two fire trucks through direct purchase for right. from County's Capital Reserve. But I'm certainly not a firefighter. I believe fire trucks and tankers are very different vehicles. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I thought somebody would go over. And this has the bower credit. Either tank trucks. I thought they were tank trucks. Are you requesting a pump truck or tank? Let me get the full, I don't want to misquote them, but yeah, there's the difference is you know the pump, the tankers, the pumper tankers, the ladder truck. Um there's the full suite as you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, maybe if uh, Gary can attend, uh, yeah. it'd be good yeah. to sort of get 
the, the full plan uh, going forward. So no, this doesn't take us by surprise. Mm -hmm. There's because uh, there's probably planned obsolescence uh, in these even if they can last 20 years. So uh, you know how old your trucks are and when we've got to replace them and need to make sure that we're budgeting for it. I will say in general, I think to give credit to both town management and the fire department that has happened in the past. So that million dollars for two trucks, many other towns struggle to have that. And Waterbury had planned well enough that that were just kind of happened in due course from the boards at that time. So I would hope and assume we're in that case again. And that's why I was wondering, we bought two, are we doing two more? But I think whatever Gary puts together, hopefully we'll explain that all. Yeah. All right, and so we'll see him at the next meeting, the yep. 15th. Mm -hmm. All right, sounds good. Um, let's see, reappraisal. So the, the bill for the state to take over reappraisal appears to have a fair amount of steam from what we can tell. Um, I welcome. Um, there's a couple open-ended questions in the bill. Uh, one, since everyone essentially needs a reappraisal now, they, they're proposing to put folks on a regular cycle. Mm -hmm. But if you need reappraisal now, you could be waiting a while for towards the end of that natural cycle. Um, the other question is, um, so the state gives us, in essence, a stipend each year, which you're supposed to reserve for reappraisal. There's no legal requirement that you reserve it. Many towns just budget the revenue. <laughs> um, so I think you, an open-ended question is, the state has given us about two hundred thousand dollars since our last reappraisal, which we have reserved. If the state takes over the process, taking over the revenue stream going forward is an obvious no-brainer. But do they reach backwards and take over what they've given you? Um, even if they do, and we have to write the state a check for that money, it's still a pretty fair deal, I think, to be rid of the process and the work forever. So, um, and we do have that money reserved. Lucky that we can spend. <laughs> the other interesting piece is um, we had proposed to use some ARPA funds for reappraisal. Mm -hmm. So those ARPA funds could be repurposed. So then our, our tranche of available ARPA funds increases from a little over 300 to a little over 500,000. Yeah. <clears throat> so if the bill fails, we're in a good position. We've got the money to do the reappraisal. If the bill passes, we're in a better position. What's the timeline on that? Sorry. You have to get through the one, one if it's, it's yeah. usually the last July day one. of uh, the session. This is when they pass all the budgets, right? The the that's five. usually in May. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then the veto session and everything else. But... Okay. Thank you. Well, we were able to revisit a number of things that have been put in the parking lot for some time. So that's helpful. Your planning is only two, I think. Yeah. I'm sorry. Your conversation with Martha. All right. Planning. Yes. Uh, um, I just met with uh, Martha this afternoon, um, and uh, we discussed uh, the phase one of uh, the uh, zoning uh, rewrites. I was just, uh, she invited me to, to have a chat because I hadn't had a chance. Um, and uh, she is, uh, feels like it could be doable to get everything done by the end of the year. That's her goal. Uh, she said that uh, it's a little bit farther behind because she was hoping to have uh, the uh, new uh, planning director in place by this month. Uh, and that doesn't look like it's gonna happen, uh, but she uh, is working well with Neil. And uh, she's also, we just got the uh, contract uh, for the SE group and the public process. Uh, and that has a built-in schedule in it. She thinks it's pretty aggressive, uh, but the faster that the board approves that uh, contract, the faster we'll be able to get them in here, meet with them, see if any further adjustment needs to be made to the timetable. <coughs> Um, and she said that uh, she's already made some good progress. Uh, she and Mary and Neil have gotten together and uh, done some work on accepting some changes to the uh, to the zoning rewrite. Uh, and she feels like it's starting to take shape. So that's what I've got. Uh, Alyssa, you may have more detailed information. Um, 
I asked her if she was be, would be able to come in and, and meet with us uh, um, at our next meeting on the 15th. And unfortunately, she's got uh, a, um, a hearing uh, for Norwich Solar down in uh, New, New Hampshire that evening. So she has a conflict. So I'm not so sure that, that she's going to be able to, to make it to that. But she said she would try to see if she can get that uh, moved one way or another and see if she can make it. So we'll hold it open for her. And uh, maybe if you can continue to uh, liaise with her and see what can be done, we can fig figure out whether she can get them on the agenda for next week or next meeting. That sounds great. And that's just to say publicly the goal of, again, we have talked about having the planning commission come in just to update about their work and how we can be supportive and just make sure we're on the same page. Um, and the only other thing I was add is I also spoke for about an hour this week to Billy Victor, who was the new member reappointed in it. He's been to his first meeting already. He's settled in. Um, I am planning to go to the next planning commission meeting, so I will also be there with May in. Um, and I believe we are doing interviews, I guess is what I would say, through the planning zoning position. So also certainly share the desire to have someone hopefully in that position soon. Um, and where we, are we on that contract? I can all say. Okay. Yeah, uh, so. Does the board need to sign off on it or approve it? No? Okay. Um, so um, so I'll let her know that. we budgeted uh, for the match, so we're good to go. Right. I just didn't know. She, she was yeah, under no. the impression that the board would just sign off mm -hmm. on the contract. Uh, and I uh, said so I would check on it this evening. Uh, hearing that it's all set and that. Uh, it's in place so uh, we can hopefully move forward and I mean ideally even have uh, uh, Mark from SE group uh, come along mm -hmm. if that's would be helpful in moving that process forward. All right. And now I think we're back to uh, the warned agenda. Um, oh formalized extension of the zoning bylaws uh, with a motion. Can do it. I pulled them up. Um, so we discussed this last week. Uh, we have Town of Waterbury interim bylaws for the downtown zoning district. These were initially adopted by the select board on April 26, 2021. Um, there is provisions to extend them. They were, it looks like they were two years initially, and we have a provision to extend them for one more year. So I will make a formal motion to uh, extend the interim bylaws for the downtown zoning district. Um, as so for second that motion. Just for clarification, are we extending it until uh, May first, uh, two thousand twenty-four, or uh, I would say for an additional year, which is the maximum allowed by statute, and we can always refer to sooner. But a year so from tonight. Saying, what's the date that that year would be ending? So these were adopted April twenty-six, twenty twenty-one, and they get a two-year and then another year. So I would assume that's until so April twenty-six, twenty twenty-four. Okay. Right. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Just just for the record, I for some reason didn't think we needed to make a formal motion last meeting. Alyssa thought we did. No. Did we have a public apology? For record, Danny took on the ordinance research. So we have Mike coming back. Well, right. Book reports for Dave. Apology accepted. Um, <laughs> And if can you just just for discussion purposes, yeah. would we uh, plan on repealing this if they indeed had a policy ready to go before before we were, our year was up? Yeah. And just to say, as a matter of course, what this is this downtown zoning district area includes the same area that is the phase one we just talked about that yeah. they're trying to relay. So yes, assuming we can get permanent bylaws on the books sooner they would yeah, like okay. this has language around this supersedes what's currently on the books i would anticipate permanent zoning you know would be the same so, so to, to, you wouldn't supersede this you would just stop the new bylaws. Yeah. to follow up what if it's not done these expire mm -hmm. and then we revert to what's currently on the book okay or you adopt what's done or adopt what's done as is and then it can be <coughs> okay. okay any further discussion I would say, and we can discuss more too. I feel like that would be a great for planning commission and maybe even Tom to review with us. Because I will just say for all of these, there's usually like have to have two public hearings, 60 day public notice, just things to say of 
the, the timelines do become a little long at the end just by statute and warning and things like yeah, that. Yeah, I think that would be good to go over so that we're not running up against an emergency towards the end of the year. Well, so. that certainly should figure into our uh, <laughs> time law analysis of the time law yeah. you know, when we're able to discuss this at the next meeting. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of extending the uh, zoning uh, bylaws, uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? We have extended the zoning bylaws for one more year. Okay, uh, adopt updated emergency plan. We have one amendment, which is just Towards the end, there's the table of vulnerable populations, table 5.1. Thatcher Brook Primary School is still listed instead of Brookside Primary School. So simple edit on that one. What did you say? Uh, I don't know. Five yeah. to second to last page. Um, I guess actually I didn't notice this before, but I don't think Polly's still at the church, right? No, she's so we can take her off of six one. And then Carla's also still listed at the municipal census. So this isn't the one that's on our website, though. Oh, those are updated online. I changed a lot oh. of those, but let me take oh. a peek. Then. Okay. I, you know, and I didn't communicate those changes with Gary, so maybe he pulled he might have pulled off. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So nothing's been changed. We'll pull it up and see if uh, I guess we can uh, vote on the one that's on the website. Um, you know what, I would be reluctant to do that because I don't know what other changes Gary might have made. So I would rather have you direct me to change names so I can do that. Okay. If you've read, you read this document, yeah. then I would rather have you direct me to change names. Okay. That way we're not yeah. taking, back any taking off something that Gary might have changed. Because Gary and I did not converse about this okay. document at all. So. so, so far I've got a change to um, Thatcher Brook to Brookside Primary and I have Polly and where's Carla? Carla right below Polly okay. at the okay, so both yeah. six one. Mm -hmm. okay. and there's any others? Um, I just Thatcher again. So yeah, same uh, name. Uh, next page. Um, so two, yeah. two. And then Carla and Polly are on the four point okay. two. And then, and then this again. Yeah. Okay. okay. Does my name spell wrong? Any other issues? <laughs> it's spelled Karen C A R L A. Well, so no. for an example, one at one time there, the one online had Scott Guyette still on it and things of that nature. Right. So I don't know if that's been taken off. Maybe it has at this point. These are ones I have caught. In this list, let's see. So it says director, Waterbury Senior Center. I would think by now they have a director. No, I don't know. They have a director. chair. No, they don't. Just okay. the board chairs. The board chair. The board chair, which would be uh, Justin Black. Black. Yeah, here's Bill, right. health officer. So it's some of it's updated. Yeah, it's it not. looks like it actually. Yeah, so Bill, is, Bill is technically still the health officer. Yeah, yeah, but you're listed for. <laughs> okay, you know, so you've got Kyle over here. So that's fine now. Okay. Yeah. Great. The only other change I see is on the top of page two, three. It says Mike, Michael Bard's board, board coordinator. We should just change that to select board chair since it's a chair. It's going to say that. Oh. 
Oh. And it has Mike. Uh, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> on uh, enclosure one one. So it has Roger's name, but Mike's email address. Mm. Okay. Wait, no, wait. It just has. Wait, That's where was that? Like that right? Right? Where was your, where was the one you just showed me? Enclosure okay. one, two. Uh, sorry, you, you're going to retain that position. It's the next thing. It has Roger's name and Mike's email. Oh, that's also not my email address. <laughs> <laughs> do we want to just table this and bring it back next two weeks from now with changes, or do you want me to? Well, I think it's supposed to be approved by, like, like today. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think we we'll approve it. Uh, it's just the email instead of Waterbury. So. To, um, and that's the same page. Mm -hmm. So we can use. Email address. Yeah, and this might need next week like a number of changes for pointed out. I was yeah. gonna say, I was gonna say, <laughs> pending thorough review of yeah. appropriate contact information. Looks like it's highly possible. I'll say we could approve it and just amend it. Yeah, just mostly phone or uh, email that addresses, names, and and um, the school. Uh, the, the school, school. Yeah, <laughs> so if all, all of us can go through it one more time. Uh, and James, we can move yeah, to approve yeah. pending these changes. That might be the way to deal with it best. Anyone uh, care to make a motion? I make a motion to approve the local emergency management plan dated April. <coughs> 2023 as presented to the select board. Um, I will second with the friendly amendment pending update of relevant contact information by our highly qualified town clerk, who we are very grateful for. Thank you. <laughs> That's a very friendly amendment. Okay. Uh, do I hear a second? That was actually okay. a second. Second on my. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, any further discussion? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hearing none, all in favor of uh, approving the local emergency management plan uh, with the pending uh, amendments or changes, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, that's approved. Charter update. Have, uh, Mike, is this your I, Yeah, I, I tried to provide you with uh, a, a list of municipalities that have uh, charters. Um, there are a few cities, there are a bunch of towns, uh, there are a bunch of, really a bunch of villages, but a lot of the villages, they're uh, chartered. You know, town with, you know, utilities, uh, you know, light, you know, light companies, et cetera, et cetera. The bigger ones uh, have a little bit soup to nuts. It's almost like our operating procedures that we have as a municipality, and some of them even refer to back to state statutes. And so even though they want, I think the big thing, as we have discussed for a long time, and that's why I put it in sec separate document, uh, a lot of towns do uh, have their uh, a charter to look at different uh, taxing abilities outside of their local municipal taxes. Mm -hmm. And there are four different ways to look at uh, option taxes. One is via a sales tax. Uh, the sales tax of 6%, you add up a percent. So for a total sales tax within the municipality of 7%, you could do it via a meals tax, where the local of uh, the state meals tax is 9%. You could add 1% to that for a 10% total meals tax. You could do it with a, uh, I like to call it the sin tax, the local option alcohol beverage tax. 
uh, take 10%, add 1% for a total tax of 1%. And one that's, I, I think, only used by two municipalities uh, is the local option rooms tax. The uh, rooms tax, you know, they don't, because again, rooms and meals tax go kind of hand in hand. You know, they're both at 9%. But some of them probably just are not choosing to uh, tax, uh, you know, you know, meals. So they go with the nine percent plus one percent for a total tax, uh, you know, to you know the users. I listed if if you look on the second pages, you look at most of the towns are using either sales tax or a, a rooms and beverage tax. And you could see the, the list. Some of them are looking at both. You know, there are, there are numerous communities, Brandon, uh, Barry, et cetera. You know, they use both taxes. So they hit people up, you know, in different ways. And the taxes can be used by the municipality in a variety of methods. Uh, some, as you can see, the big municipalities, the cities, Barry, Burlington, Essex Junction, and, and St. Albans, uh, they have fairly prescriptive uh, charters, which encompass almost everything as where we're now governed by state statutes, they include a lot of the state statutes in to govern them. Uh, in terms of the uh, towns, uh, there aren't that many towns or four towns uh, that are using, uh, you know, charters, Hardwick, Milton, Montgomery, uh, and Spring probably determine what if what we want with a charter uh how prescriptive we want it to be do we want it to be just, just like where it's a taxation thing or do we want it to be you know encompassing all the parts of our municipality so you know you could you could you could do a very simple charter which would include something just just as at, a lot of them are prescribing how they want to have their town meetings on there i know we're kind of you know we're juggling around how we may want to see you know town meeting in the future i think that's that's still up for debate which way we're going to go with that but i guess mm -hmm. i'll entertain i don't know tom do you want to add <coughs> anything to I think, um, <clears throat> given you know the cost pressures that we talked about with roads coming up, um, fire trucks, all those things. I guess if I had my brothers, I'd recommend that you consider something really simple to get the local options tax passed, and then some of the more detailed, inclusive charter changes could always come after the fact. Charters can be amended. Mm -hmm. And so I think, um, I guess my general advice would be to keep it pretty simple and, and really focus on the local option tax and think about what you would use that money for and how you would want to, you know, in the, I'd advise you to have a policy about the local option tax and how you'd want to spend that. Um, at least how to spend a, a substantial portion on that policy. One other thing I'd add is if you look at the votes and some of the history of the local option tax, my observation, it's not, I'm not claiming this is in, empirical and that fact based research 100% of this. My general observation is um, local option taxes at the select board level oftentimes has some controversy but they haven't faced a lot of controversy by the voters, generally approved them pretty strongly, um, which is just an interesting observation that I think most people get it. Um, I get that it's a difficult thing in this room, but it almost seems like it's a little less difficult for the general public when they've had to vote. 
My one real question is, if we were doing it mostly for a, as a, for the, some sort of option tax, what would we? I know, like some of the towns, they have it. You know, like you know, general powers is per Vermont state statute. Is would we would be doing something like that nature? referring back to st statute for all the other just general operations of the community? We'd have to draft the language, but I don't believe you would need to, because that happens automatically. It's de by default, isn't it? Yes. It's not addressed in, in the charter. Mm -hmm. I'd be curious to have a conversation about um, what other problems we may be able to solve or opportunities we may be able to create with the charter and think if there are some things pressing that we've noticed over the past five, 10 years that could be simple, doesn't need to be super convoluted or loaded up, but um, I know we, this has been discussed for years and there's reasons. So, if, you know, we had a conversation about what maybe some of those opportunities or problems to solve could be and, and what we might want to include in that first round. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Alyssa, you had mentioned uh, something about uh, the appointments. I would say, as a hypothetical example of a potentially easy <laughs> Look thing to way way to include, include. Um, the planning commission is now, you know, potentially interviewing yet another candidate. So, particularly right now, because we default to state statute, um, yes, I think the planning and zoning department appointments in particular might be a relatively straightforward thing, but that could make a lot of difference for creating some time and spots yet for the planning commission and also candidly reflecting more accurately that in practice these employees have reported to have been supervised by the municipal manager. Um, Chris, you want to talk to you? Yeah, a um, couple of questions. You said that the you know, local options tax can be amended. Is that done at the select board level? Uh, are you assuming that the state's going to allow your your charter your charter can be amended. Um, that is not done at the select board level. That requires local voting approval at a town meeting, okay. and then the state has to adopt it. Okay. And the second question is: uh, when you say local options tax, you read off many different variables as the approaches of taxation. Right. Uh, when you say local options tax, is that specific to one thing or? You know, what does it impact and who does it impact? I'm, I'm generally referring to it um, as the all in 1%, essentially retail sales tax, the same thing you pay sales tax on currently. Rooms and meals. Yeah. Rooms and meals. Um, so you're looking at the whole, the whole, whole form, yeah. all four. Okay. And does that, is there any taxation through that process on Airbnbs? Yes. This time there is. Yeah, they're, they're maybe part of it. Going along to <clears throat> Alyssa's question, I don't think it should be just appointments such as for the Planning Commission. I think it would be appointments for every commission and board that we have. And to be clear, I wasn't saying the Planning Commission. It was because by state statute, the Planning Commission needs right. to recommend a candidate for zoning administrator, which in towns where you have very limited municipal staff, makes a lot of sense that your planning commission is supervising that individual in our municipality because we have a municipal manager form of government. I think right. it's created some, you know, again, when I was on the planning commission, we spent three meetings, which in a group that meets 26 meetings a year before cancellations is a pretty significant mm -hmm. percentage doing interviews. Um, so. But I think guiding all appointments could be a good thing and be getting control of the Tom mentioned uh, vacancies as well, like right. the, um, some filling vacancies. Around. Yeah. I would just say like, I was interested, like Stowe is not on here, and I see them on my was that just a version you have? To me, they Stowe still, updated their charter recently. I think they was it was in the book. Okay, um, that's so I had the online, which I should have circulated, and that was my bad. I just wanted to reflect. I feel like there are some kind of middle ground. I don't mean middle ground, but I would say not as large as the larger municipalities or as small as some of them that I think do have charters. And again, I think it's somewhat besides the point of Tom's point or recommendation around, you know, straightforward, plain and simple for now, but I just wanted to make that yeah. it feels like in the list I had seen there's some that are not. Yeah, it said that they have a, uh, he wrote down that they have a local, op, uh, the meals and rooms and alcohol tax 2006, and then the full, the full 
local option tax is effective this year. I know, and I just mean they have a big old charter that dictates things like how employees are employed and things like that. I, I right, think yeah. it's been talked about as a model, just a, a comparable size community. Not that I'm oh. saying it's exactly analogous, but um, our Richmond's on here, yeah. you know, just others that are, I think, a similar staff town that have town officers, appointed officers. Again, doesn't mean that's the first thing to do, but very near. Yeah, these communities are ones that have been re fairly recently amended. Understood. Thank it you. may not be. On the this list is all inclusive. Yeah, no, I really appreciate it. And I saw it on the local one from option. Yeah, uh, and Mike, I'd like to thank you for, for doing this research. Yeah, that's right. Thank you very much. It very gives helpful. us something to look at, you know, as to what we want to include. I, I tend to agree with Tom. I said sometimes we may want to have, you know, a fairly brief charter that cover right. what we need to do. And then we could always look at having them very much include, you look at Burlington's charter, it's like, it's it's mind blowing, you know, it's everything like from walking the dog, to, you know, they have, they have things in their charter about everything. Are they the ones you can't use a, what is it, a weed whacker in the a morning? Weed whacker or during the summer. <laughs> no, it's a leaf blower, yeah. Blower. Mm. Those things do make a racket. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, if anyone else uh, feels like they've got uh, things that, the, that uh, you feel like could be addressed, like Danny was suggesting, um, why don't we take uh, another uh, two weeks uh, to pull those together and we can bring them back. Um, uh, I tend to uh, agree with both Mike and Tom that we want to keep this relatively simple and just address things that uh, need to be addressed and, and not go into leaf blowers. Um, and uh, also, uh, if you have uh, particular ideas and can talk with some constituents about how we would direct the funding, uh, because I do think uh, in talking with Teresa Wood that that will be an important component of getting this uh, through the legislature and also uh, past the town. Um, and uh, I'm glad to entertain other suggestions uh, in this discussion. And I think it's 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 per <coughs> I can't think of the word. Uh, great that we had that ARPA survey done because we have data about people's priorities and where they want money to go. It's obviously not the exact same, but it's good to at least refer back to that and mm -hmm. see the, you know, the priorities and enthusiasm that was there. So, yeah. sure. King, um, I spoke to a concerned constituent, a local business owner, um, a few days ago, and they expressed that. They would like to see if we were to do a local option tax um, to house their employees, which I perked up at. <laughs> um, so then I spoke to some. He or she wants uh, the town to house their employees? Not like directly, um, but for the funds to go for to housing. Okay, um, for, for affordable housing. For affordable housing or housing of any kind. Um, so. Then I spoke to some renters about that because I was like, well, if the business owner feels that way, then I hope the renters feel that and they they, they do. <laughs> so I'm, I was glad to see that we now have some sort of um, core uh, parity with business owners and renters or working people who are sounding the bell on what we should be spending this on mm -hmm. um, and their both pretty clear that they want the same thing, which is something that never happens. So <laughs> good. Well, yes, Mike. Um, do we have any data on how much sales tax is collected in, in the municipality, how much meal rooms and meals? We know all that. Yeah, to so, know how much this is going to generate. Hypothetical. Like, right, hypothetically, if they, because if, if this thing is going to generate two dollars and eighty three cents, you know, it's a lot more than that. I, yeah. I know. <laughs> if you did it on everything last year, county year twenty twenty two would have been six hundred thousand for the town. So it's a lot. What happens if it's just? Do you know if it, if you segregate it out just in, into seal uh, sales tax? 
Um, I can I can dig it up. I don't know it offhand. Um, I'm just curious how much like rooms and meals is compared to like sales tax. Top my head, I think I think um, I don't know. I don't, I gotta dig it up, but I wanna I don't wanna miss mm -hmm. it. Because that's a concern a little bit with me is the sales tax is kind of a regressive tax, you know, and it's gonna I know it's gonna hit everyone, but there are certain necessities that everyone needs to have and there are low income people who are gonna be you know, affected. Mm -hmm. With some essentials, so yeah, every, essential. everyone's going to be affected. But, but you know, if you look at any of the research, you know, a lot of the sale, you know, communities with, you know, especially where you have states with higher or lower sales tax affects their citizens in different ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the big issue is it doesn't apply to groceries, mm -hmm. right? But it doesn't apply to vehicles. Mm -hmm. Chris, you have sir? Yeah, I wanted to address Kane's point here a little bit. Um, I want to just make sure that everybody is aware of the fact, and I know you are, that property taxes are a huge part of affordability. Yeah, the affordability aspect. And the local options tax, um, the only benefit to that is that it's diluted by people who are here visiting. That helps the locals. Not have to fork out so much for roads, bridges, infrastructure, fire trucks, whatnot. So, in a sense, I think in, in all fairness, by putting that money towards the municipality's needs, in a sense, does do exactly what you're asking. Uh, and in complete fairness to to the other people that are trying to pay their mortgage and their property taxes as well. It benefits everybody across the board, not specific, you know, to renters and whatnot. It's because by paying down or being able to buy fire trucks or being able to pay roads through that tax, you're essentially not having to raise property taxes yes. on, on the properties here in Waterbury, which in a sense helps landlords keep their rents at a reasonable rate. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, good point. Thank you. Any further discussion on this? Okay, thanks to everyone that uh, did the research and uh, we'll continue to move this forward. Uh, my uh, goal on this is to have something ready uh, uh, by, uh, let's say, the end of summer uh, that we can uh, present uh, to uh, the uh, uh, the voting public, and so that we would have uh, something to uh, that's approved by uh, the the town to present to the legislature uh, by January one, two thousand twenty four. Just as a quick aside, I was I was shocked to see how long it was for they have the stuff for Waterbury Village, how it's all been re re revealed. <laughs> How long all the repeal section is. It's crazy. It was a process. Um, okay. And please. Yeah, let, me, um, let me leave with saying that I'm not going to ask for this to be adopted tonight. Okay. Um, I had a meeting uh, that was a little bit delayed with employees, so I had it on Friday. I want to give folks a little more time to digest our conversation, make sure it gets some, some internal buy in. Mm -hmm. um, like I said in my memo, I didn't bother comparing this to the old handbook because the old one was so old. Um, the couple of the couple of points I just want to make going through um, when you go through sections like employee relations and, and equal employment opportunity and, and sexual harassment policies and procedures. Um, I went through probably a dozen town handbooks to, to arrive at the language. Um, it's, it's what I would call quasi legal language. Every town puts their own spin on it. I just tried to have a clear policy um, just, to make it, just to make it easy for folks to understand what the policy is, what the procedure is, if there is an issue. Um, <clears throat> Did want to talk a little bit about um, some of the new proposals just to 
see where we're at and see, see what your reaction is. Um, so on page 13, there's the emergency circumstances leave buyback. Oh, I saw that. I that. Mm -hmm. And what I said to employees, uh, and this was something I stole from St. Albans, which mm -hmm. we use from time to time. And what I said to employees is, uh, if you have comp time on the books, which is, you know, over time you didn't get paid, but you put into your bank is essentially uh, vacation time or vacation time. By law, we have to pay you that or leave. Uh, we don't have to pay sick time and we don't pay sick time. Um, and so uh, I put in here pretty, pretty open language that would give me the authority to approve or deny no matter the circumstances. And what I said to employees were, uh, hey, if you come to me and say, um, I bought a new truck and I spent 50 grand on this really fancy F-150 with all the bells and whistles and I've got an expensive monthly payment. Well, tough luck, you bought a truck, it was voluntary. I'm not going to approve you cashing out any of your time for something like that. And never mind the next seven years payments. Um, well, but, if they got it for $50,000, they're going to steal it. That's probably true. Uh, <clears throat> but if you come to me and you say, you know, my septic went and I've got a pretty dire emergency and I've got to come up with 15 or 20 grand for a septic, um, a lot more amenable to consider that request. Um, and the other piece I said to employees is that if you have a challenge and it's December 15th and, and we're not making our budget, my answer is going to be no, but it also might be, well, we have a new budget soon enough. Um, so I said to everyone that if this passes, um, you have to be very discreet and reasonable about how you request this. I don't expect these every other day. Um, it's really supposed to be just to give employees a little leeway during an emergency. So I would treat it that way. Um, so something new, but I think it's a it's a good ad to give folks an option if there is an emergency. Again, we have to pay that time. So I think it makes a certain amount of sense to. Um, I have a question about this. Does the employee have to have the uh, vacation um, funding already accrued? Yeah. All right. So yeah. we're paying out something that. We, we already owe them essentially. And I think one of my other criteria, and I, I said this to employees, is that some employees, most employees have pretty good vacation banks and, and use it with some discretion, but every organization has a few where the, the minute the month rolls over and they get a new day, they use it. So if you're a 10 year employee and you've got very few hours in the books and you want to cash them out, probably a very different answer than if you're a 10 year employee and have 200 hours in the books. Any other questions on that, Mike? A couple of questions. One, I know all of us keep around the table here are paid. Are we subject to this employee? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you are not employees. You are elected officials. Okay. I, I thought that was the answer, but I said I think it was something willing to ask. And the other thing, and maybe I missed it going through it, our annual performance, formal and performance reviews required by a supervisor. Not required. There's a section in there on performance reviews. I saw the thing. And and what I what I said to employees is that um, I didn't put a form in here by design. I want to have them. I want to do them annually. But you know, to me, the, the most important part of an employee review I've ever had is the conversation. It's not the form. And so I don't want to be too wedded to a format that says, you know, rate my, you know, uh, you know, my attitude on a scale of one to five. Um, mm -hmm. I want them to work with people to come up with something that's genuinely helpful. And I feel like, again, personal experience, most employee reviews are like going to the dentist. <laughs> They're, and, and, on and, both sides. On both sides, and, and and so often they're not about professional growth and improvement. They're and if, and I think if we wet ourselves to a form, um, it's just not going to work. Yeah, I was so, looking at some sort of a form, but more of a process because I think it's good 
at least having discussions. Hey, you're doing a great job. You know, some people don't tell their employees that they're doing a great job. Or, hey, you know, we would like to see, you know, and have some, you know, I'm not saying a form, but have some sort of formal process that at least yeah. there's a check in and the, yearly. And the way to ensure that is when I have a review. You have the right to say to me, Tom, we want you to be doing these. Are you doing these? Right. Because I saw the thing on progressive <laughs> discipline. And I understand that. But I'm a big believer in so, sometimes it's really good to have an annual review to say, hey, you're doing a great job. You know, yeah. People don't hear that enough. Yeah. So it does say performance reviews will be generally conducted annually. Where is that? Uh, page 18, second, uh, second item. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, Chris. Um, there's not a form. Uh, how do you, a disciplinary action, how do you? You still are able to break people up, and how does that work? Yeah, so I think um, I think rather than the form, a better way to do a review is to have a conversation with the employee and and to talk about my observations, their observations, the observations of some other people, depending on the employee and what their duties are, and to document that conversation, um, positive, negative, and different. Um, I think that's the way to do it. Um, I just think, you know, I just think forms that say, you know, break this category and scale of one to five. It's just, sorry, it's just not the right way to go. I guess my question is that documentation is is legal binding uh, uh, material to, for dismissal that if, if in fact you did have to. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes you get the question in government mm -hmm. about dismissal, mm -hmm. and, and some people will say in government that it's impossible to dismiss a bad employee. And the okay. answer, and the answer is whether you're a police officer, whether you're a town manager, whether you're whether you're a the bookkeeper or a teacher, it's the same process. You document it, hold the person accountable. Yeah. Anything else that you want to uh, call our attention to, Tom? Yes. Um, page 20, which is um, time off from work. And the reason I want to make sure I have a couple more weeks before I ask you to adopt this, if you're comfortable, is that um, a lot of employees have sort of individual agreements. And so I wrote this to, I think, in a way, be fair to new hires, but also to honor the agreements. And so I've told everyone, just double check your own pay stub and make sure I'm not messing things up. Part of that is why I've wrote that clause where employees hired before July 1st, 2013 have more time because they've got that time right now. So I don't feel like I want to take away someone's mm -hmm. time. Um, and I think the overall accrual policy is, um, you know, putting a cap of 240 hours is still a really generous cap. Um, it's what most towns seem to have in that range. Um, and then the other piece I want to raise um, is the next page is personal days. So that's this is a complete addition. Um, and it's what I what I said to employees are that the 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 old handbook and the the big rub that employees have is that some of the time off that the town gets is not consistent with our peers and that's rubs in the wrong way, sometimes makes recruiting a challenge. Um, so I'm proposing a clause that full-time employees get a personal day, um, doesn't carry forward, it's a user, loser, one per year kind of day. Um, <clears throat> most towns seem to have that, some of it have more than one depending on your tenure, but. I think one is pretty fair. Um, I think of it as the birthday day off. <laughs> is that uh, in practice at all though? No. So this would be an additional day off that they don't have right now? Yes. And then holidays. 
So there was a conversation about Martin Luther King. So the, currently the town employees don't get um, Martin Luther King or Veterans Day. Is that correct? Veterans Day, right? Um, Veterans Day is in That's November. In November 11th. Oh my right. gosh, just I'm struggling to remember. There was somebody that they traded for the day after Thanksgiving. So, um, so there's not, I think for years there was a pretty standard list of federal holidays, which most states and towns went by. Mm -hmm. There's not exactly a standard list anymore. Um, the standard number I could come up with um, was the same number here, which I believe is 12, uh, 11. Four plus six. Oh, that's 11. <laughs> So the federal government has added Juneteenth. Um, the state, through their, I think, the strong employee unions, um, has had Bennington Battle Day for years, which oh, people just gonna would Bennington love. <laughs> <laughs> and I, at one point, I, I entertained, and I, at one point, I entertained an idea where, where people Ooh. said, "Well, why don't we have you know twelve holidays, choose eleven, and the town will be open, but you get to choose between you know Martin Luther King or Bennington Battle Day." Um, <laughs> But that's complex. And then public works employees, um, if they're called in on holidays, are getting uh, public works employees if get the holiday off with pay, just like office employees. But if they're called in, that's all overtime. So in theory, if those public works employees took off Martin Luther King Day, but we had a snowstorm, that's double time and a half for the entire crew. So. And it's also a bit of a record-keeping nightmare. Um, yeah, it's pretty generous. So I think I think our list is as close to standard as there is. Um, and none of these would be floating. None of these would be floating. Um, some towns um, that have different personal days um, are open the day after Thanksgiving. Um, Or open for a half day and that gets added to a personal day. But mm -hmm. the way I wrote it, you know, the interesting thing about Martin Luther King Day is we're open, but we don't have foot traffic. I think the public presumes that we're closed. Uh, um, yeah, uh, there's no bank, and there's no post office. So <coughs> great day to get stuff done. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that, that was part of the argument for Bennington Battle Day, which was, you know, it's great to come into the office with no one's there because you can just clear your messy desk. And, yeah. But I think in the end, I think it's a decent list. Um, <coughs> So the Bennington battle didn't even happen in Bennington. Yeah, I mean, four in Vermont. So I think that's a standard standard list. It is an enhancement over what people have today. And was it, uh, on which days would the uh, offices be closed? Is that uh, on all those holidays? Yeah. So the holiday, all these? If the holiday is on a Saturday, we'd be closed the Friday before. If it's on a Sunday, we'd close the Monday after. Okay. Um, <coughs> Tom, I wanted to ask you if this was typical to other towns employment policies with six months of probation. Yeah. That's typical? Yeah. Yeah, six, sometimes 12. Jesus. All right. Do you think that's too short, or I think it's too long. Too long. Yeah. Okay. I've worked a lot of places. It's usually ninety. The reason I, um, I actually was thinking about twelve. Um, the reason I thought six was appropriate is because, um, especially for public works, it's it's a different job in the summer than the winter. Mm -hmm. In fact, I considered putting twelve for public works, but I didn't want to segregate and have different employees doing and with different periods. Um, I'm open to discussion and change on that for sure. I'm not arguing if you thought it was too long. So I think generally speaking, if you you have someone who's not working out, it's usually pretty obvious pretty quick. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you have you make a fair point. I'm not I'm not opposed to change. Okay. Mike. Yeah, oh, emergency clothes and weather conditions. In this day, day and age, as much as I know, I would never want to endanger any employee to come to work. But as we learned during COVID, people can work. You know, I, there are probably some employees that could do their work remote. I don't know how possible that is. And 
it's just a it's just a, a money saving versus just say you know like the day before we know we're going to get a two foot snowstorm say bring your laptop home and you know you're authorized to work from home yeah and we do that now you do that now. yeah we've done that now we've done it in the past um i've had a storm so bad this winter that this this was just a that one day the governor declared a yeah. state of emergency and we closed at three you know there's a number of us who work to live close by, so like I'm not opposed to staying at the office, but there's also a number of employees that right. have 40 minute commutes and they should go home before the roads get bad. So we just just kind of always worked it out. Right. I'm talking about the big snowstorm. We all know we, we all hear in the weather report they they say like the world's coming to an end. You could still conduct business in this day and age. Yeah, you can yeah. still conduct remotely. We we learned that from COVID. Yeah. Also. This is me not wanting to backtrack, but on leave of curls, please forgive me if this was covered. This is only earned, so you only can earn, which is to say no one is fronted any amount of leave when they start. No. I feel like oh, that's one of the things yes, I've heard. Yes and no. Okay. And so there's, both are covered. Let me get to the page. Uh, what page 20. is that on again? Ooh. I'm on 20, I'm just... Okay. So, on 21... <laughs> There's also some provision to give me a little flexibility. Okay. And, and, and I'll give you an example. Um, now there's, there's a recruit now who has a family. Um, so the person would be coming to Vermont, you know, has children, has childcare obligations. If you're going to hire that person, you got to somehow give them some flexibility on day one or it just won't work for them. Um, that's just sometimes what it takes. Um, and similarly, you know, I've hired people who say, you know, I want to start the job September 1st, but you know, one, I've got a vacation planned already, or two, I've got a surgery or something. So you've mm -hmm. got to, yeah, you've got to have some flexibility. The intent is to try to stick to the basics as much as possible. And, and in the past, because the policy has been so old, it's been kind of each person <laughs> has their own negotiable deal. Yeah. No, I think I appreciate this for I guess I mean I think it's the I think it's tough either way because I would both want to advocate for consistency and think that this right. is reflective of the reality that realistically I think right. there's reasons folks may want to take a day or two days off before their first two months on the job like that and perhaps the personal day also comes with that. But and I've had hires say to me, hey, your offer of 75, um, give me 70, but give me more time off during the year. Yeah. And so sometimes it's mutual benefit. Mm -hmm. Um, I just have some edits that don't need to take up our time verbally, so I'll just email those okay. to you. It's nothing uh, super substantial. And then I've got a couple things I wanted to, a couple other quick things. Um, and of course, now I want to find it. Um, <clears throat> so there was a bill, it was actually our local uh, representative's bill about paid family medical leave. Um, and it looks like it's not going to not going to make it through. And, and really, I had a, this came through employee conversations, especially at the library, which tends to hire um, a lot of young folks um, with families. And they talked a lot about some of the challenges. So I wrote in here um, our own scaled down version of it. And it's two weeks of paid, paid family leave time uh, in the event uh, birth of a child, spouse of birth of a child, or adoption. Uh, so it's not the full 12 weeks. Um, it's, it's something that wouldn't be used very often. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm past that stage in life, um, but I, I remember not that many years ago where, you know, you, you hit that stage in life and, you know, you're generally broke, <laughs> sleep deprived, and having a little bit of paid time off would have been a really big deal. So I feel like I wrote that partially at their request, but I maybe I naturally sympathize with it because I'm still young enough to remember clearly those days. Um, and we, I'm curious, have we looked into the cost of just offering short-term leave as a benefit? Or is it so... <coughs> not, I mean, the challenge is it's not used very often. Right. Um, it's used really rarely. Um, and for that reason, maybe it's not cost-effective. I had short-term... <coughs> 
leave when I had children. Yeah. So essentially your short term paid leave. I had yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so this would be a two weeks of that. Yeah. I feel like it's a it's a start. I know we as employees we have an option to buy that. I know that through <coughs> one of the provide you know we get our through insurance benefits meeting yeah. and we have the opportunity to pay for that ourselves. And if I was planning to have a family, maybe I would do it. I'm done. <laughs> so I, but I just wondered if we had looked into that. Maybe, maybe from a cost perspective, it's better to just offer it on a case by case and not to the whole staff. Mm -hmm. I thought I'd start here. Um, it's been a been a pretty open topic with the legislature for quite a number of years now, and I feel like it gets a little strong in momentum. So maybe they'll. Rewrite our policy in a year or two. Mm -hmm. Maybe twenty forty six. And that's in the family medical leave section. Um, other piece I wrote in. Um, and I think I found a way to pay for it. Is is the vision and dental? Um, so in doing the math. Um, but, and, I, and I wrote these sections very broadly. Um, I make it clear it's part of the health insurance package in the town. To that every fall when the rates come out. Um, so there's no vision or dental now. And I think every, it, what page are we on? Sorry, 32. Um, 32. <laughs> so in doing the math, um, if we provide the vision and dental plans to just employees. Um, to give a rough rough number, a vision plan is about eight dollars a month, and dental is about forty. So, if vision and dental was just provided to employees, um, you know, twelve to fifteen thousand. Some of that's paid by EFA. That's everyone. Um, and then I would propose that if employees want to add a spouse or spouse and children, they would pay the premium differences, and we can just do that through payroll. Um, so this would just be employee coverage. Mm -hmm. um, and in looking back, one of the earlier changes I made is that um, people who have left the town, um, if you leave and you've got vacation, we owe you that. And you know, you might have 10 weeks vacation, we pay you every week for 10 weeks, but those employees still stayed on the benefit plans and even accrued additional time as if they were working. And I while they're getting paid for the yeah. for the, uh, the leave balances. And so I, I think employee benefits are employee benefits. Mm -hmm. And you're not an employee. So the benefit ceases when your employment ceases. Um, and that that in the last five years averaged out has been would have been the same cost as vision and dental. So I mm -hmm. think, you know, I hate to use sports analogies, but I'll use it, you know, keep the money on the field. Um, <laughs> so I, th I think we can, um, I think we can afford this as part of the as part of the health plan package. Let me ask you, and I'm not familiar with the intricacies of the regular health plans, but a lot of the regular health plans don't they include like a Oh, you know, some of them include some dental and or vision. Absolutely not. Yeah, so I'm trying to chill them up, but maybe the other some, some do. You think? You're paying all. Oh, so under one of the Obamacare changes was that pediatric. I don't know about this. Pediatric dental is covered. It's one of the mandatory items of coverage. That certainly doesn't mean it's free. Just means oh, that no, nothing's free. It's just means that you know you, you give your you give your blue cross blue shield card or MVP and you know it's part of your deductible or, or whatever claim you have. Right. Um, the I think the beauty of the the dental for employees is that um, there, there's not a lot of plans to choose from. It's New England Delta Dental, and they've got you know three options. But uh, they there's orthodontic coverage through them, and it's. It's like a thousand bucks and it's a thousand bucks per person per wife. So it's not, and, and if you leave New England Delta Dental and come back in 10 years, trust me, they know you spent your thousand. Um, but it's something, and I've heard that a lot from employees. It's um, mm -hmm. it, <laughs> and something I heard from employees 
may be surprising to me is that um, a lot of adults have orthopedic needs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so that's something that, um, think of everything in here that this is what people want the most. I think if they, I think if you, if, if you came back and you said, you know, we didn't like the holidays proposal, we'd like to stay open one more day, but we'd like to vision and dental. Mm -hmm. uh, I think people will be pretty darn happy. With I would agree because it, it comes a point of diminishing in terms of how many holidays can we offer. And sometimes you, I think you could do is more kind of float, floating holiday schedule if you believe in celebrating this or that holiday. And Tom put that language in to be right, right. And that's, 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 we give Christmas that if you have a different religious holiday, exactly, it, which I think is really important. Mm -hmm. so. And then let me just talk about a few things that didn't make it in here, and part of it is. So we have an iron them out. We can always just put it with the amended. And part of it is um, they're just long simmering issues. The biggest one is public works and on call pay and an on call policy. So what they're all told when they're hired is you're part of the road crew and you're on call twenty four seven in the winter. And summer is different, but you're on call. You're essentially on call at all times of the winter. Some towns have a specific on call policy where you know, the crew is subdivided and those people get paid for being on call. And um, I think with the with the increases we've given staff, we don't need that, that we're really competitive in terms of pay. Um, the other thing I've said to our crew is, look, we operated during COVID with half of you at home. Mm -hmm. And so we can have a policy that says half of you can be on call during the winter and you know pick your weeks and trade off and that benefits you all because you know that unless there's a big blizzard or a huge ice storm for a week you can go home and relax and drink a beer and, and not worry about having to come in um, and i've also said you know you're a crew of seven you want to be able to get together and figure that out and and work out a policy and come to me um, and it's it's just resulted in um bickering and I, and I finally I, I finally said to him 10 times over, this is a pretty basic thing that benefits you all. I want you to work it out. I want you to come together as a crew and figure it out for yourselves because there's an obvious answer that benefits everyone here. And maybe of the seven of you, not all seven are going to vote for the same thing, but certainly four or five would. Um, and you would all have additional time off without worrying about your phone ringing. Uh, and I don't think I need to pay you for that because that's a benefit to you. Um, that that's one issue um, <clears throat> that we haven't resolved. The other thing I put I didn't put in here is work from home. Mm -hmm. So one of our employees um, before I started was allowed to work from home a couple days a week after COVID. Um, our bookkeeper. Um, I didn't know that until recently. Um, so I found out and I said, well, you know, I like having you here, but uh, if it was really important to you, I'm okay with it. So Friday, she's home. She's easily reachable. She's in town. Um, the challenge is that, you know, Karen's one of them. Some people are front lines and they can't work from home routinely because they've got to deal with the customers. And so, um, and, you know, it's not like highway people can work from home. Um, and I sort of view myself as work from home as an emergency situation. Your job is to be here, you're paid by the town. Um, and so I'm struggling to write a policy that treats people with equity. Yeah. Are there other people who um, just in general have acquired or are interested in being able to work from home from um, with any frequency? I mean, in theory, planning and zoning can do it when, when we're fully staffed. We could switch off with two people. Someone's got to be there to answer questions. But not just feasibly. I mean, are people interested in asking actively about it? Like, is there a need to have a conversation to think about putting in there? Or is there not really? And it was working the way it's working. So um, I think it's generally working OK. Mm -hmm. I think um, I think a few people would take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. They had some additional opportunity to do it. And I think we could we could work that out as our organization. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, the folks right here, it's, it's really impossible. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe you know Karen has a slightly different impression. I think Deanna, for instance, could, Deanna could put could in some hours home. once. Yeah. Deanna could work from home. Certain, you know, she had a project. I remember when I did 
you know, we use water books. We use these really archaic paper books to read water meters. And every four years, you have to redo them. And it's a it's a heck of a process. I did it actually during COVID, so I did it all from home, mm -hmm. and it was fine. So if she was doing a big project like that, she could do that from home. But and sometimes there's a benefit if you're not interrupted. Yeah, oh, totally. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's a benefit to that, and and you know the phones can be directed to your house now, as you might have said, right. or it can work remotely. But to Tom's point, I can't. Right. I can't do a marriage license from home, and I can't open the vault from home, and uh, you know. So, I think I think the quality of having it in writing is important, but recognizing that's just not possible for some of us. Um, so maybe Pam and Diana are an entity, and one of them can, but they can't both do it because I can't. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, and the clerk's office is just different. It's just a different thing. I mean, you could need a little more time with me before they ask me some of these questions. Mm -hmm. so but all of it will be subject to approval right. by the supervisor. Yeah. 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 Just walk out. And I think a, a part of the conversation, I think it sounds like you're going, you're approaching it. I don't, I don't, it sounds like you're approaching it really well, and I don't have any questions about that. But when we talk about equity, I think it's important to remember just part of the conversation. Equity doesn't mean everyone's getting the exact same thing. Equity means everyone's getting what what they need and then also what works best for the town as a whole. So I think it's okay if if there are different needs and everyone's jobs are getting done. I think it's okay. If it's causing trouble and issues in the office, obviously it needs to be addressed. But just as part of that conversation, like, you know, it's 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 good to keep that in mind. Yeah, um, I appreciate you saying that, and I just wanted to say that on annual reviews, which is, I don't think it has to be in the policy, but I will say, as a new employee at two separate organizations who did not get annual reviews, I was promised in the timeline, I just want to say, and I think you would do this anyway, I think the wording is here inside, I would encourage, I know an employee has a right to request one within a year, I would hope there was a proactive engagement with said employee prior to year, because I will just say that's one of the, like, power differential things where I have personally felt like at certain times that I can be like, hey, so I'm supposed to get a review. When are you getting on that? <laughs> um, so just to the extent that can be yeah. a positive, um, proactive. I think the language in the policy is appropriate. Okay. Um, so I don't, I think that's more practice comment, but I just appreciated Andy's acknowledgement that some employees may more be more comfortable being their own advocate in a situation like that, and <clears throat> some may not, and that just varies. Um, I have one separate if I can go off topic, but. Uh, well, I'll, I'll just uh, follow up on that one in particular. Uh, I do think, uh, I agree with uh, Tom about the, uh, it being about the conversation, but I also think having that con conversation documented mm -hmm. is an important yeah. factor because, you know, you get away from that and then people's stories can change. And mm -hmm. uh, I think it is important yeah. for the employee to say, we agreed that I did a great job. It's right here in writing. And then you can move forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. Oh, go ahead. My second was just on, um, there's a reference uh, early on about the travel and training policy. I do know the archaic manual were not referenced. We did have a formal professional <laughs> development policy with amounts of funding, and I know it's something we've provided to employees in the past. Do you feel like having a separate policy outside of this handbook is a better approach? Or do we envision, you know, I'm thinking, I mean, this was more youth led than the town, but like paying people to go get licenses, paying people to go back to school, masters, particularly things relevant. So what page are you on? I'm on 12 in expense reimbursement. I may have missed it if you identified it elsewhere. I was wondering if there was a professional development policy, because I know that was archaically similar in the old one. And it says the town has a formal travel and training policy. I don't know if that's a separate policy or if that type of policy is what would cover professional development for staff. Um, but I know it's something we funded in the past, so I just wasn't sure. I didn't see it among the like EAP and dental. I think the travel things. and training is more about reimbursement following okay. the rules, but so there's no formal policy that says you know, we will provide you a certain amount of professional development. Uh, what are your thoughts on that as a benefit? <coughs> um, the town and EFLED are different because EFLED folks need licenses. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'd have to think about that a little bit. Okay. Don't have a great answer for you offhand. 
I will say as well, to put on my cards on the table, the person who advocated for creating a professional development policy at my current org. Um, I can just say, like, I know there's trainings I want to do that are not things I personally can fund and but do think are pertinent to and enhance my job performance. So I think it can be modest. I mean, mm -hmm. say ours is a thousand dollars per play per year, and maybe it's less than that or rolls over because also I know some are at larger fees more infrequently and vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I know it's another cost, it's more. Again, I felt like some was happening in practice anyway. I want to sure. say we have like $2,000 a year or something is what's currently in the handbook, which I know might not be in practice, but I think it okay. is an interesting okay. benefit to look at. There was a... Okay, go ahead. Um, page 23, um, talking about bereavement lead. Yes. Um, there was just a weird, it says an employee, spouse, child, grandchild, parent, grandparent, or sibling and the parents. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Is that like your sibling and, and their, like a half sibling and their parent? It's the second half of the sentence. So sibling, parents, grandparents, children, or sibling. Oh, it says siblings twice. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just repeat. Oh, yeah. Let me, let me. Look at that. You're right. I mean, look yeah, at that. That's it just uh, got repeated. Yeah. Okay. So it's like, what is that part There's of the family? A lot of siblings in this family. Yeah, it's the, a sibling, but with a different parent. So it should say spouse, child, grandparent, parent, grandchild, or sibling. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Good call. <laughs> and then, um, great. oh, there's. Of an grandparents a second time yeah there's two grandparents uh no it, you know it, it's correct so yeah. that sibling so the second one <laughs> so it's you might maybe better if it's two sentences so an employee's own spouse child grandchild parent grandparent or sibling period or and or the parents grandparents children or siblings of the employee's spouse oh so they're they're uh, okay yeah okay i got it it's it's just yeah. written very I mean, yeah, if it was, uh, you put the employee's spouse at the beginning of it, you know what we were talking about. I stole that from Waterbury, Tennessee. That's what it's. Waterbury, Waterbury Tennessee. Tennessee. And then you had. You know, it was a joke. Are they like evil Waterbury? It was a joke. I know I have. The guy yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah. 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 Let us know. It's Waterbury, Our constituents from Tennessee are going to be here. People going to be writing to us. Good call. That can definitely be <laughs> Yeah. Any other issues that we want to bring up? Yeah, Mike. You actually have a clock in, clock out for lunch, lunch time? Informal, but, but new payroll systems. Um, most, which we're looking at, we've actually got a demo uh, in a few days, I believe, or is it next week? Is this week? Right Mm -hmm. um, so modern mm -hmm. modern mm -hmm. payroll systems for hourly employees. Have, that in there. Yeah, I mean you you don't always do the clock in clock out for lunch. It automatically says you know you're you're here for you know eight and a half hours. You're right. Eight. Um, and I know we've sometimes had that problem. People would work through lunch and they would think they would could leave early as a result and stuff like that. It was always a hard issue. Alyssa. I just wanted to say thank you. I will say personally, this is something I hope we have had since I've been on the yeah. select board. So just having an actual draft to be reviewing and discussing is great. So thank you for all of the work and thank you for doing the outreach with employees and other things to hope that it will be well received. So Danny's going to send me some changes. I'll incorporate some of these things. Um, Kane, I'm, I'm good with the 90 days. I'll throw that in there. Awesome. Thank you. And hopefully we can have a final in two weeks. I just want to do was his comments. I think it was long overdue. Thank you for doing it. Sure, thanks. Is um we plan to start meeting this month, right? So the day mm -hmm. that we in June. Yeah, hopefully. I guess I'm sorry. I'm usually the one who's like, don't track it out. Uh if if the three I didn't see much of look before I speak. If it's a three month probationary period, are you having a sit down formal discussion at the end of that three month? Because if it is short, I think it's it would be important to have that 
formally in case you would like to extend it to six. Um, I'm in favor of six or three, but but I think it's a, it would be prudent to be to have a really formal check-in if it's three in case you're just not sure and you need another three months. I think the reality is that if things are going well in three months, there's probably not a formal check-in. It probably just happens. Okay. Um, but yeah, I can, I can write it to three months and say that it can be extended. I'm using. I'm doing the thing where I'm using my anecdotal experience because I, I've had an employee that at three months our probation period is just three months, and we weren't ready to let them go, but it wasn't going well. And uh, you know, if it had been six months, it just would have given us a little more. So may or may not ever happen. Just something to think about. Yeah. I don't think it could be you. You just have to be three or six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, think that, I, I, I think that would be very totally confusing. Yeah, yeah, right. We all have clear, and uh, uh, no, I think I think it's fine. I just I think I think uh, a good way could be ninety days with the option to extend another ninety. Would you do? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think, that's yeah, yeah, I think that's beyond that, it's right. And make decisions. Yeah. 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 Because you're essentially giving someone a second chance at that point. Right. You and that's why I was making it like a formal because you want to outline here's what's not working. Here the, here we want you here. We want you successful. Yeah. Here are the ways to become successful. That's talking. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Obviously, you're talking with one Chris, that's a good strategy because with employment law, it's a lot easier to terminate someone within a probationary period well, yes. than it is to. You know, after probation is over. And if you're not sure, you know, I was leaning to the six months, I could be okay with the, the 90 days with the potential extension. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, as I think as Danny pointed out, the, the benefit of the 90 days is that uh, you have a opportunity to address what points need to improve rather than you get to the six months and it's like, <laughs> See, I think we've reached the end of our agenda. Do I have a motion? Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, a motion to adjourn. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any <laughs> extensions? We are adjourned. Thank you to the chair and the board for adding five agenda yep. items and adding the ending before and that. Coming off the parking lot, all those things we just well, about. what I forgot because I got excited about the morning is the planning for the next meeting. Um, oh right. So sorry. Can I just email you? Is it illegal if I say them out loud right now? Uh, we can reverse that can decision and off reopen. The record. Off the record, we discussed Gary. <laughs> Coming on uh, next it's meeting. Already on it. Okay, the chart just we wanted to revisit the charter ideas, things that we might want to have. Yes. Um, handbook approval was mm -hmm. possibly the next Is one. Is that for the next time? I can have it ready for next Well, it doesn't need to. I just jotted it down. Um, so the question mark. Planning commission, but Karen, I'll follow up with you next Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that Marcus Dask might not be able to be like, so library. Library already went back on for two weeks from tonight. We can take off reappraisal, yeah, reappraisal, yeah, reappraisal gravel supply. I also agree. Oh, okay. 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 And gravel supply. Trade policy is going to be the first like meeting in June. Yeah, like so we can the, either move like it onto there now or just put it in the parking lot.